What's going on guys, Ness here. Today what I want to do is address some questions that I've been asked in regards to the 1760 game Android console, or as I like to call it, the Android Pandora's box. So what I'm going to go over today is basically how to install apps externally from the SD card via APK file, and then I'm going to do a couple more game tests just to see how this thing runs because I not understand there was quite a few questions as to well, how does it run this game, that game, etc. So I'm just going to try a couple other games and we're going to see how well it performs. For those of you who this isn't their first rodeo and they fully understand how to sideload applications and whatnot on an Android device, you can go ahead and fast forward to when I'm doing the game test. But for those who are unsure, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys right now. So let's head over to our computer and put our SD card into our PC. If you don't have access to a PC, that's fine. You can actually use the web browser on this device in order to download the ABK files. So you're going to go ahead and go over to the website, uh, which I use to download my ABK files. I'll put a bunch of links to a bunch of good emulators that work pretty well on this device in the description below. But this is just a basic example. So you're going to go ahead and click download and save this APK file to your computer. Once again, like I said, if you don't have access to a computer, you can save this directly onto the device and it'll work just fine. So once you got that taken care of, let's go ahead and find the file on the computer. And let's open up the SD card. We're going to create a folder on the SD card just titled APK. So let's go ahead and do that now. And you're going to copy the APK file right into this APK folder on the SD card. Let's go ahead and take out our SD card and head over to the Android Pandora. So once the console is all booted up and you have your micro SD card already inserted into it, go ahead and head over to the Apps tab. Scroll down to where you see ES File Explorer. The console should come with it by default. Go ahead and click that. Once in the File Explorer, find where your external SD card is located and go ahead and click that. Click on the folder that we named APK and go ahead and proceed to click on and install every single file that we have in there. Once they're all installed, you go ahead and click done. Let's go back to the home menu and go back over to the apps tab. And as you can see, every single APK that we installed should be present on the apps tab now. And it's that simple. It's that simple to go ahead and install the uh, applications externally. So now let's head back over to the computer and I'm going to show you guys how to put some ROMs, put some games on this SD card. So now we're back over at the computer. We're going to go ahead and open up that SD card. Then we're just going to make another folder and we're just going to call it ROMs. And inside this folder, we're going to go ahead and create separate folders for each console that we want to emulate. So SNES for the Super Nintendo emulator, N64 for the N64 emulator, PSX for the PlayStation emulator, so on and so forth. And then you're going to go ahead and drop all of your game files into said folders. And then when you put it back into the console, each emulator runs kind of differently in terms of uh, how it locates the games. 
but more or less you should be able to select your path and select it to the corresponding folder on the SD card. And it's pretty much that simple guys. That's pretty much how you sideload any apps and emulators, etc, etc, and install it from an SD card. So now that that's all done, let me go ahead and test out some more games. So one of the more frequent questions that I was asked is if I could demo some more Dreamcast titles. In the previous video, I only showed one Dreamcast game, and it wasn't a particularly graphically demanding game. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and play Sonic Adventure 2. As you can see, there's a few little tiny slowdowns, a couple of hiccups in the audio, but other than that, it seems to run pretty good. When configuring the actual joystick as part of the mapped controls, I noticed there were a lot of dead zones with the inputs, particularly in the corners of the square gate. So what I opted to do every time I play an external emulator, I like to play with a gamepad. The gamepad I'm using here is the SF30 Pro, but you can use any wired or Bluetooth controller for this device. I haven't tried a PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 controller, but I know the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One controllers do work on this console. Another Dreamcast title I decided to run was Capcom vs SNK. As you guys can see, the sprites are acting kind of weird, doing some weird funky thing right there. But besides that, the game is perfectly playable and seems to run at a good speed. Shifting gears over to Nintendo 64, Mario 64 seems to run perfectly fine. Ocarina of Time is more or less playable, but I really don't like the way it runs on this thing. As you guys can see, there are some audio hiccups, some slowdown. Uh, it's just not the best way to play this game. So yeah, I definitely would not recommend playing Ocarina of Time on this device. Moving over to PlayStation 1, I'm playing Mega Man X5. As you can see, it runs beautifully on this device.
playing Parappa the Rapper runs really, really well on this device. I really feel like this console loves PlayStation 1. Every PlayStation 1 game I've thrown at it, it's played pretty much perfectly. So that's pretty much it guys. As I said before, this thing is far from perfect, but it's actually a pretty neat console and pretty good at what it does. If you guys have any more questions about this console, feel free to drop it down in the comment section. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.